Good morning, or good afternoon, depending on where you are in this in the world, and welcome to SCL, the Subject Composition and Light Podcast from uh, RobNonPhoto.com. Well, hello, and welcome to the first episode. Um, my name's Rob. I'm the webmaster and creator behind www.RobNonPhoto.com, and I've decided to do another podcast. Uh, this is the first episode. Um, and what we'll talk about is a little bit of history first. My history, I guess. A little bit of background. Um, I'm an amateur photographer, a beginner photographer. I got my Fujifilm S5700 camera uh, Christmas, or just after Christmas 07. Um, and to be honest, before that, I wasn't really into photography very much. Um, I used to have a little Kodak point-and-shoot, um, but I didn't really wasn't really interested in photography as a hobby but what happened in in November 07 um, I, I broke my arm and I had a lot of time to reco- had to take a lot of time off to recover and at the same sort of time I was looking for a new video camera for one of my other websites to record um, little videos and I thought why not use the opportunity to buy a better digital camera as well and I ended up buying the Fujifilm S5700 which is uh, I guess you call it a bridge camera in the fact that it's a bit like a mini SLR with a fixed lens. Um, so it's got a, a great zoom on it, 10 times, um, but it's got all the controls of a SLR, a digital SLR. It's got manual mode, aperture priority, program mode, uh, shutter priority mode, and all the controls associated with them as well. And while I was laid up reading magazines and things, I really started getting into photography as a hobby. Um, Years and years ago, uh, back in the early 80s, um, I lived in Hong Kong for a while as a kid, and my dad had a a film SLR, and I remember we used to go out and take pictures with that, and it sort of reminded me of of those sort of times, Um, and I became really interested in becoming a better sort of amateur photographer. So the the idea behind the site uh, robnumphoto.com is to is it's it's a blog just to sort of share those learning experiences really as I'm going along um so that hopefully some of this stuff might be helpful to uh, some of the listeners and readers of the website. I like to shoot things like landscapes um I, I particularly like HDR shots as well because I think HDR is really good for pulling loads of detail out of shots as well and, and making your camera camera's image is a lot lot better um, I like shooting macro as well um, super macro is fantastic on the S5700 you can get incredibly close um, and I guess my main tool for improving my photography is obviously uh, reading books reading magazines looking at websites etc but the, the sort of practical side of it of where I go out and uh, practice is something called a photo walk which you've probably heard of before now now for me a photo walk is the process of saying right I've got a couple of hours today and I'm going to go and visit a particular geographic location and walk around and practice the things I've learnt in uh, from magazines or websites and try new things out as well just to get better because I heard uh, I can't remember what what website or podcast it was on somebody said you know the difference between a beginner and a master is 10,000 mistakes and the idea being obviously is that you learn from your mistakes if you self-critique your photographs or submit them to other people for critique and so the best way of learning is to get out there and just shoot loads and loads of photographs and look at them critically afterwards and say right what have I done wrong and what I forgot to do differently and if you read some of my photo walk posts on the blog you see I do that you know I'll say oh this one looks alright or I'm not that happy with this one and the reason is you know I didn't get the angle quite right or there was some blur or I didn't use my tripod etc um, and then my sort of final presentation uh, place for, for these pictures is on Flickr because uh, Flickr is a, a really good tool for sharing your photographs so other people can look at them but it also gives you an end point for the photographic process so if you can imagine um, what you just do is you think right I'm going to go out and take some pictures of say uh, I'm going to go to one of the local country parks and you wander along and you walk around and you take the pictures then you get home and then you edit the photographs, well see which ones you want to edit, and then you edit the photographs, 
and then your sort of final point is displaying them on Flickr. I mean, you also might want to print them out, etc. And then the ones that you think are really good, you can then submit to groups, so so other people can comment and critique them. And it gives you a nice workflow um, and gives you a nice sort of finishing point um, to then say, right now I'm going to go on to go on to next go on to next project. So that's why almost all my pictures on robnumphoto.com they all link to Flickr so that you know if you would be so kind you can click through and make comments on the pictures um, you know critiques you know what what you like about them what you don't like about them what you think I could have different done differently etc etc like that okay so um, what have I been doing in the last week or so well it's the weather um, has been really good I mean I live in Gosport in uh, Hampshire on the south coast of uh, the UK of England and um, we've had some really nice weather and I'm lucky enough to live next door to an old Victorian fort, Fort Brockhurst, which is owned by English Heritage but they haven't been opening it to the public for years properly so they did this weekend so I went down there with my son Oliver and we spent an hour walking around and I took lots of pictures for a photo walk and you can see it on the blog or on my Flickr stream and it was great because it was really sunny, which isn't, which I know isn't good for landscape photography. You've really got to go early in the morning at late or late in the evening. But if you're visiting public buildings or areas or museums, you can't because they they're not open really early in the morning. You've got to go during the day. Well, I had my polarizing filter on, and it was one of those days where it was sunny, but there was lots of clouds in the sky. So I think I got some quite nice shots. I think in post processing, I probably made the sky a bit too blue. Uh, but I got some nice panoramas, handheld panoramas, which was nice. And th- the good thing about it, looking back at it now, although it was annoying at the time, was because I was with, was with my son, um, and he's 10, obviously he was getting bored when I was sort of standing there, sort of taking photographs. So I had to move, we had to move really quickly, you know, visiting each part of the fort. Um, I, I mean, it's a fort, but it's really a big castle, as you'll, you'll see, sort of thing, if you look at the, the pictures. And so it forced me to keep, keep, you know, clicking and running, clicking and running, and clicking and running, which was a nice change from sort of just dawdling along by myself. Um, I also, a few days ago, on Monday uh, the 16th, did a <laughs> a, a geocache photo walk. Um, one of the questions that often comes up in forums and um, things is, you know, oh, I can't think of any places to take pictures of. You know, you've maybe visited all the interesting places around where you live and it can be difficult to, to find the time to get away to other places. One of the ideas I've got and is is to use geocaching as a catalyst for this. So if you don't know already, geocaching is a hobby where you have a handheld GPS um, device, a global positioning system, and you go on a website, um, geocaching.com, and join. It's all free. And you download the, well, you, or you write down the coordinates of geocaches. And what geocaches are, they're like little mini treasure boxes and that are scattered all over the country all over the country and then you use your gps to go and find it and then you sign the logbook or and you can swap trinkets if you like and some of them can be a bit more complicated where they have clues to follow and things like that but it it gets you out in the the the, uh, great outdoors and it gives you a great excuse to go on a photo walk because you're often visiting places that you don't you know you haven't visited before and you discover all sorts of things that maybe are a bit off the beaten path because obviously these um, geocaches these treasure boxes have to be hidden so that um, what we call muggles which people who don't know about geocaching so they don't discover these things and throw them away or nickel the bits I'm (laughs) I made a bit of a mistake though in the fact that my GPS system is a Garmin E-Trex H handheld system which is great it's nice and cheap, really tough, rugged, etc. But it doesn't have a map on the screen. It just has like an arrow that you follow, points you to where you're going. And the problem with that is, because we live on the coast, there's lots of inlets and harbours and things. And although it only said two miles on my GPS, the location to the cache, there was a harbour in the way. So I ended up walking about seven miles all the way around all these paths. But, you know, I got some okay pictures. I went to places I didn't know existed, and it, and it was all right. Um, the thing that I got really wrong though on that that photo walk was because I was tired because I've been work, walk, walking for so far and it's so hot. I couldn't be bothered to set up my tripod for a few of the shots. And if you look at the, um, I think I call it Ferrum Cache um, set in my photo stream, 
there's a few of the HDRs are definitely a bit dodgy um, where you can see ghosting because the camera's moved between between the shots um, yes um, so while I'm out there on these photo walks then so what's going through my mind obviously I'm looking for interesting photos but one of the things I find helps is to bear in mind that the guidelines for photography which are you know what's the subject of your photo what composition you're going to use and what's the what's the light I mean the subject can be anything um, but what it really means is in photo you can have an interesting photo that doesn't have a main subject but often photos are more interesting if you do and I, and I try and get a main subject in lots of my photos but often I, I, I don't bother or you know because there isn't one or I'm too far away and then composition which is the thing I'm really practicing on at the moment is using things like the rule of thirds so that's where you uh, say you're taking a landscape picture you make sure that the horizon is lined up against um, well, sorry, let me start again. You divide your, um, your your viewing frame, your viewfinder, up into, into um, what is it, three, six, n uh, nine equal square boxes. So you, you draw two horizontal lines and two vertical lines on, on, the, on the... Well, you don't draw, you imagine them there. Or most cameras, if you press one of the buttons on it, you can get up a grid. And then what you do is you line up your horizon on one of the rule of thirds lines. So it's either in the top third or the bottom third not in the middle um, and then your subject you line up on one of the vertical rule of thirds so if you imagine if you were taking a landscape that had a tower on it you would line up the horizon on say the lower rule of thirds if the sky was interesting and you'd line the tower up on the left or right hand vertical rule of thirds and that gives you a real nice basic composition and the next thing you tend to think about is whether there's any leading lines into the picture, so like paths or rivers or railings or shadows, something that would draw your eye across the picture. Um, and what you have to do then is when you've got your subject and your composition, you've then got to start thinking about what the light is. So where's the sun coming from? Is the subject lit from the front? the back or the side do you have you got to move round to get the light looking better or improve your composition all this sort of thing um, thinking about the fact that um, the most interesting photographs are often taken from a different angle than eye level so most people when they're taking pictures with their camera just stand in there and you put your camera up to and you click but Often it's better, you know, to get down low or get up high and try these unusual angles so you get these interesting compositions. So that's what I fo that's what I'm thinking of when I'm going around with a photo walk. And although I don't always use it, one of the best things you can always take with you is is your uh, tripod because the act of having to get the tripod out, set it up, and put the camera on slows the whole process down and enables you to really look at the image and think, you know, can, can I improve this by moving moving around or, or taking a different angle? Um, so yeah, so that's photo walks and what I do. A little. I've mentioned Flickr before. Um, for those that don't know about Flickr, Flickr is this great photo sharing shite, uh, shite. <laughs> site <laughs> at flickr.com so f-l-i-c-k-r.com you can join for free and it allows you to upload photographs um, which you can then share with other people and join groups groups are the best things so you can join a group say on the S5700 everybody who's got an F5700 can join it and you can submit your photographs so other people can look at them and then you can join in the forums and talk about your cameras or, or anything else um, and it's really superb I, I love Flickr it's really great um, my bit of advice would be though spend the $30 or $25 or what it is and get the pro account because that then enables you to basically back up almost all your photographs online as long as you're using JPEGs and you can have lots of different sets to organize your photographs and um, it's great really really good really really enjoy it really really enjoy it so my tip would you know would be if you haven't already go and join Flickr and upload some photos what I'm planning to do with the podcast is have a sort of a little bit of a uh, sort of agenda for each um, podcast and it will probably go something like a bit of an introduction to you know who I am to people who haven't heard before a little bit of 
my news, <laughs> so what I've been doing um, or learnt about in the last week or so. I'll then I'll have a subject I'll talk about, so today it was photo walks and in the next one it's probably going to be um, backing up your, your photographs I think. And then I'll have a few recommendations that, that you can take away and, um, and look at. Um, to, to help you maybe improve your photography. So the f- the first um, my, re- my first recommendation is my recommended podcast uh, that, I, that, that that would be good to uh, go and have a look at. And this one is by a guy called Craig Tanner at the Radiant Vista, which is a really great photography website um, all about photography and editing and everything. And he uh, he does uh, the Radiant Vista the Daily Critique podcast. And you can you don't have to have a an, an iPod to to look at it. You can download them and watch them. And it's at um, www.radiantvista.com slash critique. I'll put all these links in the show notes on um, robnonphoto.com. And these podcasts, it's a video podcast. And what he does is he take users uh, submit images and he looks at them and uh, he tells you, you know what he likes and, and what he thinks could be better and then he edits them as well in photoshop um to make them better now what's really what i really like about it is he doesn't go oh no you have to open this layer up and press this tool or something you just see the artistic process at work and how he makes the pictures um uh, more vibrant, more dynamic. It won't be for those out there who aren't really into picture editing, um, but if you're into changing your pictures to make them look better, I would say, then the Daily Critique from um, the Radiant Vista is, is superb, superb. Um, there's, uh, I'll slip another one as well. There's one actually on there as well called the, I think it's called the Photoshop Workbench, and in that, the guy who does that one, I can't remember his name at the moment. He actually shows you exactly what to do in terms of tools. Um, so they sort of go together, but they're, they're working on different photographs. Um, recommended website for the week. Um, what? Oh, yeah, the Adobe Video Workshop. Um, this one's at uh, www.adobe.com slash design center, one word, so that's D E S I G N. S E N T E R slash video underscore workshop, um, and this is a whole load of videos on all, all the Adobe products, telling you how to use them. I mean, it's great, it's brilliant, it's all free, and there's some great Photoshop stuff in there. Um, but if you use Lightroom or anything like that, they go through loads of different techniques, and it, they're, they're videos, so they're really cool. So what I tend to do is, you know, get an image out that's related to what they're doing on the screen play a bit of the video pause it um work on the video and then you know play more so that's so that's really cool one of the things i'd like to do every week as well is recommend a flickr photo stream for you to look at um that from someone who produces images that i think are really good and are worth looking at and learning from and this uh, week i'd like to recommend uh, Phil C's photo stream um, and he's at www.flickr.com slash photos slash D50 so that's D uh, the number 5 the number 0 L-O-V-E slash um, and again I'll put that link in the in the show notes and he's got some beautiful landscape pictures uh, some of them look like HDRs I'm not sure he obviously does a lot of editing in Photoshop but there are loads of atmosphere. He does black and whites and um, um, toned black and whites, where it's not black and white. You know, it's it's, it's like tone, like a sepia or, or a slight blue or a grey. And they're oh, they're really beautiful. Some of the shots, really, really, really nice. Um, you look at that, and you can look at it, and you can see his composition, um, and and he really telling a story with quite a few of these images as well which is you know one of the most important things in um, in photoshop so t- take a look at phil c's uh, pictures on his photo stream you know le- leave some comments leave some favors it's um, really really nice um also i'd like to recommend a Flickr group which you can join or just go and have a look at and one that i uh, discovered the other day that's really cool is the art of landscape so if you go into the search box in in Flickr and say uh, art art of landscape and then press the little drop down arrow thing so it says groups um, go and have a look at that one because oh yeah, if you're into your landscape photography there are um, 
loads and loads of, of stunning images that are just take your breath away um everything from large landscapes you know where, where you get everything through to the more um how can i put it um almost not surreal but um where you just see a little bit of the landscape where you know somebody maybe focus on the waves um or abstract that's the word i was looking for you know instead of seeing the whole picture you just see a part of it and uh, some of the guys and, and ladies there do do some really nice work um I haven't submitted any pictures yet because I feel a bit, ooh, <laughs> they're too good for me. Um, but there's also um, a nice discussion on there when they talk about things. And they, they do run competitions um, for uh, uh, to get submitted to the group and, and what are the, the best photos of the month and stuff like that. So the Art of Landscape Flickr group, definitely worth um, having a look at. Okay, well, that's it for the first podcast for of the SEL subject Compos- composition and light podcast from uh, robnonphoto.com and um, please visit the website remember you can contact me at my email on scalespeeder at gmail.com um, I've also got a Flickr group started as well for robnonphoto.com that does that's only got me as a member so if you fancy it um, you just need to go to uh, ooh, where have you got to go it's uh, www.flickr.com slash groups slash rob nun photo uh that's r-o-b-n-u-n-n-p-h-o-t-o-o-t-o O-T-O, um and join and submit your images um, what i'm hoping to do is maybe when we've got a few more people joining the group we can have um maybe um tasks or you know where, where i'll say you know this week why don't we all go out and try and take pictures of you know using the rule of thirds or something like that if that's what people want to do and that might be that might be quite fun and a learning experience because that's what it's all about and a safe and um, nice place to have your photograph critiqued as well because I think it's important to be positive about when you're, f- when you're critiquing photographs so please go over there and join the group um, and there's a discussion forum there as well so you, so you can put your ideas on um, maybe what you'd like and obviously you can leave comments on the on my website as well Okay, so thanks for listening to the first podcast. Um, I um, hope you go out and take some images over the coming weekend and share share them um, with us on, on Flickr. And uh, thanks for listening again. And that's Rob from robnonphoto.com. And I'll uh, see you on Flickr. <laughs>